I upgraded the cheapest keyboard on Amazon, so you don't have to. Why, so you don't have to? Well, howdy hey, I'm Hippio Tech, and I get very angry keyboards. Also, yes, that is Flex Seal I'm pouring into my keyboard, I'll explain later. Now, the story begins with a challenge. Betty? Yes? This is Betty, aka Switch and Click. A few months ago, we challenged each other to build the best gaming keyboard possible. And let's just say, What the heck just happened? It did not go over well. But you're probably thinking, what does this have to do with the cheapest keyboard on Amazon? I'll be back. And I'll be... Budget. Well, this is where I had an idea for revenge. I want you to upgrade the cheapest keyboard on Amazon. What is the cheapest keyboard on Amazon? Well, well, well. It was at this point that I realized I didn't think I'd get this far. I frantically looked around on Amazon to try and find the cheapest keyboard. And I came up with this, the Mage Key 60. AKA the cheapest and most popular. Now, I'll tell you the price later, but this is definitely the cheapest we could go and also go custom. Oh, did I mention we'll be doing some weird stuff? Oh yeah, I can find weird stuff. And we'll be doing all of this in hopes to make the best possible budget keyboard from Amazon. And with that, we were ready to start the challenge. No, I'm sure this is gonna be super easy and I'm definitely gonna win and there's gonna be no hiccups and my keyboard is gonna work really well. But little did I know, when you're working on a really tight budget, things might not work out how you think they will. And this is no exception. Hopefully you'll be able to learn from some of my mistakes. Speaking of mistakes, only 69% of you are subscribed and that's a pretty big mistake. Now, before we get into upgrading the keyboard, let's figure out what we have to work with first. This is the Mage Gi. What, McGee, Mage Gee, what, Wizards, I guess? And it's the keyboard that now pops up more than any other when you search mechanical keyboard on Amazon. But I couldn't help but wonder, why? Why is this thing popular? Like, none of the features stick out at a glance on the product page, so I'll be taking a look at it closer. Now, as far as the accessories go in the box, I mean, well, wait, actually, that's kind of impressive. There's a bunch of accent keycaps. This is a pretty good touch, and maybe one reason why people like it is because of that. There's also a USB-C cable, which is surprisingly modern for a cheap keyboard, and some spare switches, which we're gonna talk about a lot soon. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but nothing too luxurious. Oh wait, there's a keycap and switch puller. And now it's time for the part that most of you are interested in, the cheapest keyboard on Amazon. And again, I say that there is cheaper keyboards, but this is like the cheapest custom keyboard. It's a bit of a loophole, but it's gonna work. Now, coming in at $29.99, that was really hard to say. The Mage Gee 60 is basically the same price as a dinner in Seattle. So I'm not expecting much, but I do see lights on the keycaps. So that could be interesting. Does this have RGB? At a glance, it looks like your average 65% keyboard. Now I don't have subway surfers or anything to show you, but if you're new to keyboards, I'll try and keep this as simple as possible. Now at a first glance, this keyboard kind of just looks like a normal keyboard. But similar to a duck in a bear costume, sometimes there's more underneath the surface. The case is unapologetically plastic. It, it would not apologize, I really tried to get it to. And it's got a Mage Gi logo smack dab right in the center. I will say this two-tone design is more original than most $200 keyboards that I've seen lately, so it's got that going for it. And it feels really cheap in the hand. Oh my god, it's so light. Why is it so light? Now, I'm used to picking up heavy things. Don't take that out of context. So when I picked this thing up, I was, it was, it was something. I'd wager to say there is no form of weight or dampening in this keyboard. Like, you can't hear that it sounds hollow, but dear god, I think it's gonna be a massacre inside. Yikes. You're probably wondering, Hippio, if this is such a cheap keyboard, why and how are you even gonna upgrade it? Well, generally, if you buy a cheap keyboard and you put in just a little bit of effort into it, you can actually get it sounding way better than an expensive keyboard. And I wanna try that here. Now, let me clarify by expensive keyboard, I mean like Razer or Logitech or something. Now, you see these switches, you see how they're purple? I'm really confused because I'm editor Hippio here and I looked back at the product page, they don't sell a purple one. But I can only assume that it went out of stock after I bought them. But it doesn't matter because these are really bad. These are Otemu tactile switches. I don't know the exact brand or specification, but they sound very, very pingy. Basically what that means is, oh no, oh no, this is gonna be bad. You see those two little metal pins there? That means that the only switches I can replace this thing with are Otemu style switches. A brand that I think personally doesn't make good switches at all. 
Also, I mean, it's expected, but the keyboard does not sound or feel great, but I'll show you the sound in a minute. After I put down my nice springtime desk mat from Kinetic Labs. This is my desk mat, by the way. I have a line of three separate pixel art themed desk mats that I sell, link down below. They're in stock and only $24.99. They also look really good, by the way. Look, you're looking at it. You remember the uh, duck in a bear costume or bear in a duck costume? Yeah, so this keyboard has lights, but they weren't RGB. They're just blue, just blue lights. I guess that's still better than nothing, which some really expensive keyboards don't even have any lights. Now here's what it sounds like. Now, if I show up to the challenge with a keyboard that sounds like that, Betty is going to ruin me. Even if she just like spat on the keyboard, it would still probably sound better. So I'm gonna need to mod it. And the first step to modding it is gonna be taking the keycaps off with a little bit of magic. See, I'm a mage too, Gee, take that. Now, as I mentioned before, these switches are not very good. Now I could take them apart and lube them all by hand, one by one. But all the supplies would cost like 20 to 30 bucks and the time would be like four to five hours. So I've got something else up my sleeves. I think ultimately these switches just don't feel good enough to sink any time into or money into. And that's kind of the moral of the story here. Now, at least this keyboard is hot swap, meaning I can take these switches out without needing to desolder them as if it was soldered in, then I would throw this in the garbage. However, there is a big problem with the hot swap PCB as I mentioned earlier, and I'll talk about that more later, but it's gonna, it's gonna cause some issues. Speaking of issues, uh, don't look at any of these spoilers for what's to come in this video. Do not look at the spoilers. Now, I have a few ideas of how I'm gonna upgrade this thing, and most of them involve dampening it to make it sound deeper and thawkier. And wow, there was nothing in there at all. Completely barren wasteland. All right, so there's literally only three pieces to this keyboard. Now, this empty bottom housing part of the case is gonna be the biggest trouble here. Because it's incredibly hollow and made out of plastic, it's gonna be reverberating and bouncing around, and the sound I'm gonna be getting from it is not very good. I mean, additionally, the feel won't be very good because it's so hollow. Now, there's also this top plate bit, which all of the switches slot into, and usually, a keyboard will come with foam in between this and the PCB. However, this doesn't, so I'm gonna have to come up with something more creative. Are you ready for me to start my villain arc? Now, I've been wanting to do this for a very long time, so let me grab my Flex Seal Liquid Rubber. I have genuinely no idea how this is gonna make a keyboard sound, but it's basically a liquid silicone, and silicone dampening is very, very good. However, I have like a week to build this keyboard, and this takes a day or two to set, so I'm gonna have to cut some corners here as I still have to edit this video. I'm just gonna generously pour this into the case and try and fill up all of the gaps, making sure I don't accidentally fill it too much because that would be really bad if you did that. I also had another idea, and this harkens back to one of my original Amazon keyboard modding videos, of coating the whole entire top plate in a layer of this liquid rubber, AKA Flex Seal, thank you, Phil Swift. A lot of damage. Now, similar to putting chili sauce on a sunburn, this isn't really the best solution, but I think this is gonna dampen it a little bit. Or maybe at the very least, it's gonna distract you from Betty's build so you don't vote for that. And while I wait 24 to 36 hours for the flex seal to dry, dear God, that's gonna be rough, it was time to go switch shopping. Now, I was the most excited for this part of the video as I wanted to buy a bunch of switches from Amazon. However, I quickly realized that, oh, they're not gonna work with the board. What I would say is damn near every switch that I'd normally go to for a budget keyboard does not work with this budget keyboard. Why? Well, the PCB does not support five pin switches. And on top of that, it doesn't support switches that have that big of pins. So I went through my whole switch collection very frantically to find some backups that might work. Now I found these Gamma K Bumblebee switches and they kind of suck. And then I found these Zako Sakura switches that really just didn't spark that much joy. I tested them out side by side and I was trying to figure out what's gonna work the best. And ultimately I think I found the right choice, but I'll talk about that in a second. Next, it's time for a mod that I really don't recommend. Now, this is the part of the video where I say, do not try this at home. Now I've done this mod a lot in the past and I call it the Hippio mod. And generally I wouldn't do it on this type of keyboard with the weird hot swap sockets, but Madison on Amazon said that she did, 
and it made the keyboard sound amazing and poppy. So Madison, I'm gonna listen to you, and if this backfires, you're getting it. Speaking of getting it, the Flex Seal had not properly cured yet and is still squishy. However, I have completely ran out of time for this keyboard build if you can't tell by how frantic I'm getting. So at this point, it was time to just bite the bullet and build the keyboard, squishy Flex Seal or not. Now, so far, the Flex Seal is like, $3 if you take the amount of flex seal that I use. The press and seal is like $3. So the mods are pretty low entry and pretty affordable so far. Now with the board screwed back together, it was time to put in the switches. The flex seal helped a little bit with the hollowness, but there was still one big issue, the stabilizers. Yeah, they're really bad. So I got a hobby syringe and Permatex dielectric grease and I'll have everything I use in this video linked down below by the way. This is my number one method for lazy lubing stabilizers. You just shoot some dielectric grease into them and it makes them sound and feel quite a bit better if they're bone dry. It also saves you the time of taking them apart and it's very affordable. But okay, the switches, the switches. After trying all those switches earlier, I decided to go with the Leobog V3s. Now these might look incredibly boring, but they're actually a very, very good switch. Basically what I look for in a switch is how cheap are they? And these were 25 for a hundred. 25 bucks for 100 switches. On top of that, they were incredibly well factory lubed, which you'll hear in the final sound test. They also felt very smooth. Did I mention that before? They're a linear switch and no scratch, no ping. They're also only a 40 gram spring, so these are really a good switch for me. They fit all of my personal preferences, which is what you should look for when you're building a keyboard for yourself. Preference. Now, what wasn't preference is the amount of pressure that I had to put installing these. No, you're not getting out of this with magic, Hippia. Because of the sockets, putting these in required so much force that I'm worried I'm going to break something. Now, is there a chance that these aren't actually compatible with this board's PCB? Possibly, but my thumb hurts. You guys don't even know that my thumb hurts. Please say thank you for using your thumbs, Hippio, in the comments say thank you, Mr. Thumb. Anyways, after about 30 minutes of thumb pain, I already had all the switches in. And my final verdict on these switches, I'll just, I'll give it to you, they're very good. If you're looking for super, super cheap switches, these are better than most that I've tried. Now for the keycaps, it's a bit more interesting, and this is definitely going to be a very preference-based choice. Now the keycaps that came on the board are totally okay, they're just not going to be that great for sound or feel, and these keycaps are a mess, oh my god. Coming in at $26.99, or a little bit cheaper than the whole keyboard, these keycaps are Dysub PBT, and they're honestly very, very good for the price. For reference, premium keycaps are usually $70 to $120 US, so these come in a lot cheaper, and they still give you that nice keyboard aesthetic look without the keyboard aesthetic price. Good old Sumgzin, back at it again with the cheap keycaps. Now, if you look at this keyboard, it looks kind of nice now. I'm not gonna lie, it kind of looks nice. But I can't even imagine what Betty is up to. She said she's good at doing weird things, and that terrifies me. I think in total, I've put about $50 into upgrading this keyboard, and I guess we're gonna see if I got $50 worth of value. Oh yeah, also in the background is one of my other desk mats that I sell, uh, link down below. But I couldn't help but get a feeling like all that force I was putting on the switches has maybe messed something up. Like, maybe it's not gonna, oh, wait, it lights up. Hey, it lights up, that's pretty good. Yeah. Okay, wait, false alarm. The switch isn't working, maybe it's a different switch. Um, none of the switches are working. None of the switches are working. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, for legal reasons, I had to mute the audio on that clip. But look, look at Nola, she's trying to cheer me up. Yay, thank you, Nola. Um, so yeah, the keyboard doesn't work. Now, I'm not sure if this is Madison's fault for telling me I should press and seal it, or maybe it's my fault for flex sealing it, or Maybe it was the switches or something, but it doesn't work as a keyboard and ultimately that means it's garbage. But maybe this is just a fluke for me and you at home would have no issues modding it. So I'll still hold on for my sake for the challenge. So how is the challenge overall? I enjoyed it. I think Amazon actually has a lot of good things nowadays, mm -hmm. whereas it used to not. Yeah, I think there is a lot of potential with Amazon, but there's also a lot of potential to mess up and to spend way more money than you need to. Okay, let's do the grand reveal in three, two, one. Um, no spoilers. You have to go watch Betty's video. Thank you very much. I'll start. I'll tell you about my keyboard. Um, it doesn't work. Why? <laughs> Why doesn't it work? I don't know. But to my credit, 
My keyboard didn't need to work to win the challenge. So it was time to put a poll out for you guys to vote on to see who made the better keyboard. This was judged on looks and sound, so I'm really just hoping I can bring it home and cheat my way to the finish line. Now, Betty, the number one thing you're probably wondering is who won? Yes. Now, somebody won with 74% of the votes. I, I feel like you're stalling here. And that somebody probably got lucky or like maybe it was a fluke or- Oh, you, you need something? I oh, need Oh, geez, any, sorry. I, I oh, sorry, one or... second. Oh, man. Oh, man. Somebody's a loser. You won the challenge. Yes! <laughs> That's right. I knew it. Doc beats all. You're the best keyboard upgrader of 2023, Betty. Congratulations. Everybody go subscribe to Switch and Click on YouTube and check out her video where she built a better keyboard than me. So I upgraded the cheapest keyboard on Amazon so you don't have to. I'll be leaving you with the sound test of what it sounds like before and after and congrats to Betty.